Howdy, Tinker Nerds! So, I am sheepishly <laughs> posting this video later than I had promised, but I know that you guys are gonna forgive me, so all in favor of moving on, say aye. Well, that was awkward. I didn't hear anyone. Just a quick reminder, my book about upcycling old technology is still available for pre-order, so to get yours now, please check out the link below. All right, where did we leave off? I'm trying to think of ways to repurpose an old broken laptop, and the first project I started with was the touchpad. In the last video, we took it out, figured out the wiring output, and then connected it up to an Arduino to read the data. Now since that video, a few questions have popped up, so before moving on, I thought I'd answer a couple of them. So I found that my touchpad has a wiring connection similar to a PS2 device, kind of like how old mice and keyboards were wired before USB. That being the case, one of the questions was, why can't you just wire a mini DIN slash PS2 cable to the touchpad and use it like a mouse? And the answer is, is, yes, you can totally do that. In theory, you could just take an old mini DIN cable and wire it directly to the touchpad and plug it into your computer if your computer has a mini DIN connector. And if it doesn't, you could get one of these PS2 to USB adapters and plug it into a USB port. Another commenter said that their ThinkPad laptop only had a track point device instead of a touchpad. Well, most track points have similar pinouts to the touchpads, so the directions that I showed you for how to connect your touchpad should also work for a track point. And finally, I'm using an Arduino Uno for this project because that's what I have. But if you want your touchpad to simulate keyboard or mouse functionality when connected to your computer, you could use an Arduino Leonardo instead because it can emulate mice and keyboard inputs. All right, last time we left off running some Arduino code that showed our finger movement whenever we had touched the touchpad. So now what we need to do is use it to control something. You can use just about anything that you can connect to an Arduino, but I've decided to go with a servo, and you'll see why by the end of this video. The Arduino website has some good information about how to wire up the servo to the Arduino. And then to test it out, you can load up the sample servo sweep code in the Arduino IDE to see if it works. So now we know our touchpad works with the Arduino, and our servo works with the Arduino, so now let's get them to work together little synergy here, folks. So what I did was in the working touchpad code, I added the servo library, defined the servo as my servo, and defined its initial position. Then in the setup loop, I attached it to the number nine pin on the Arduino and set its initial position. Then in the loop statement, I changed the MX and MY variables from characters to integers. Okay, so from here, let's take a second to reflect on the previous video. With the initial touchpad code, we were able to see the X and Y axis movement whenever we touched our touchpad. Taking a closer look, whenever we move right, the X value turns positive, and move left, the X value value turns negative, and then whenever we move down, the Y value is negative, and whenever we move up, the Y value is positive. With this in mind, we can jump back over to our code and say that if the MX value, which is the X axis, is greater than or equal to 1, then we can take the position of the servo and add 1 to it. Then we can send that position to the servo and delay the script to let the servo respond. Then we can say that if the x-axis is less than or equal to 1, then we can subtract 1 from the servo's position and write that value to the servo and delay the script. After checking for errors and uploading the script, we can test it out. Now whenever you move your finger left, the servo should move one direction, and whenever we move our finger right, it moves the opposite direction. And again, even though I'm using a servo, you can use the same methodology to control other things like DC motors, LEDs, switches, or anything else that you can connect to an Arduino. So the reason I'm using a servo is to see if I can control this robotic arm's movement using the touchpad. Unfortunately, this robotic arm has four servos, but since the touchpad only has an X and Y axis, that functionality limits me to only controlling two servos. So I'm going to go with the rotation and finger servos. Hooking those up and adjusting the code, the final test worked, but it wasn't quite what I expected. While it moved the servos, it ended up moving both servos at the same time simply because it was impossible to move my finger in a perfectly straight line to only affect one axis and not the other. This could probably be fixed in code by saying that each axis has to be greater or less than a number larger than one, but it can be debugged later. The good thing is that the concept worked and we can now use touchpads to control the world. 
Alright, well there's still a lot more laptop parts that we can reuse. Laptop or otherwise, what would you like to see me reuse? Let me know in the comments below. Got any ideas? You can submit your own or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com slash ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this and if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please consider liking, subscribing, or following me on social media. That's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.